That was so cool, right? Okay, this is the GoPro Time Warp 360 and we're gonna learn how to do that today. The GoPro Max is actually an interesting camera because it allows you to capture some original content that you cannot do with other type of cameras such as the 360 and the time warp slash hyperlapse but it may seem a little bit daunting at first to work with these kind of files because you need to export, convert, and then inside your editing software, the workflow might be a little bit different. After this video, you will understand better how to do it and it might seem a little bit easier also. This video will be split into three different parts and the first one will be what kind of settings do you need to use inside your camera to be able to record the time-lapse. The second one will be how to export and convert your files so you can actually use it inside your editing software and the third part will be how to edit your clips within Adobe Premiere. So if ever you guys are more interested into one topic or another one, I think that YouTube has this feature down there where you can actually jump from one part to the other one. I'll make sure to figure that out before I upload so I can make your life easier. Going inside the menu of your GoPro, you will switch from hero mode to 360 in the lower left corner and you will slide on the left to activate the time lapse. The time lapse in 360 is actually the time warp, as you can see here written. Click on it to open the settings because we're going to play with that a little bit. So the mode 360, you can't change this one. The resolution at 5.6, you can't change it either. So you keep it as it is. The speed, my personal preference for the speed is 10 times the speed or 15 times. You can have 30 times, you can have five, two, Depending on your preference, you might try different speed, but my observation is that the time 30 is good when you're actually walking and the times 10 or times 15 is good for motorbike or cars because you're going a little bit faster. But I'm gonna give you an example of the times 10 and time 15 side by side. Then the Pro Tune mode, you will have to play with this also, especially with the exposure. Usually by default your exposure is at zero, but I find that the GoPros do a very bad job at that because it's always overexposed. So I usually put it at minus one, especially because I use my GoPro during the day. It's quite bad at low light, so I usually prefer shooting between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. when I'm using GoPros which makes the daytime a little bit bright and the exposure at zero is often too bright. So I'd rather have my exposure at minus one. The white balance, you will want to change it also. You don't want to keep your white balance at auto because I find also that GoPro white balance auto is just bad. It's changing sometimes so fast and the colors are changing also. It's just a nightmare when you're in post-production and want to color it later on. So I like using the 5000 Kelvin settings because I shoot outside most of the time and daytime. It gives me a good result at 5000. Then the ISO minimum at 100, we're okay with that. The ISO max, the GoPro allow you to go to 6400 or 32 or 16. I usually keep it at 1600 because I realize that at 32 or 6400 the noise is just too much and the image quality is bad. So for me, 1600 is the max. Sharpness, you can go medium or low. You might uh, boost the sharpness in post-production later on. And then the color. So the color for me is a little bit tricky because you have two options. It's either GoPro or flat. And basically GoPro means that you already have more colors in it. I used to shoot with the flat picture profile of GoPro before, but lately I tried also the GoPro colors. And surprisingly enough, I find it easier to work with because the flat profile, once you start boosting the saturation and the contrast, the picture quality is just not there anymore and it's a bit complicated to really boost the saturation. So I tried lately the GoPro color and I just add a little bit of a lot or a little bit of color grading on it and it turns out pretty well actually. 
You can also choose with your on-screen shortcuts later on. I like having the speed in my upper left and the exposure settings in my upper right. So if ever I need to quickly change the speed, I can do so and the exposure same. Once you're done with all these settings, you're basically good to go. So now I'm going to take the time to quickly show you my setup, which is basically my GoPro Max on the handlebar of a scooter. Back. So, focus on me. Focus on three, one, two, three. Okay. So we are done shooting our clips with the GoPro Max, and now what you need to do is actually download an application called the GoPro Max Exporter. If ever you don't have it yet, I'm gonna put a link in the description. This application is pretty easy to use, I must say when it works, more about that in a minute. Once you launch the GoPro Max exporter, you will need to decide what is your destination folder. So I created a folder that I named 360 Clips Converted. Select this folder and then I choose the name of the files or at least the prefix, 360 Time Warp in my case. Then you will have to decide what type of codec do you want to use. The default value is actually the Cineform. I tried earlier the HEVC, which is not too bad, but the H264 is, no, just forget about this one, all right? Resolution, you shot at 5.6K, I suggest that you just keep this one. And then you have a couple of options that are already ticked, which is the horizon level and the world lock. I just suggest you guys keep them on. It's gonna help you later on when you edit. Then you will want to start importing your files. In my case, I have the GoPro 360 time warp 10 times and 15 times because I tried two different settings. So I drag and drop these two files inside the GoPro Max exporter. Once they're imported, you can see the frame rate, the file size, the duration, and simply click start. Okay, so we're done converting our clips, but I want to take one minute to rant a little bit about GoPros because the application GoPro Max Exporter is simply not working well on Windows. So the good thing, I was able to put my hand on a Mac and convert these clips, but I checked on the internet and a lot of people with Windows are just not able to convert these clips. So if I get this camera and I invest in it and I'm on Windows, I simply can't edit these clips anymore and it's basically useless. Okay, this is said, now we're gonna start editing these clips inside Adobe Premiere. Once you open your new project for Adobe Premiere, give a name, I'm gonna give Time Warp. Okay. The first thing you want to do is actually bring your converted clip from your GoPro. And we can see it's at 29.97 FPS, which is equivalent to 30. So my sequence, I will pick the 1080 and 30 frame rates, and I will call that sequence 1080, 30 FPS. Okay, I get my timeline. I bring my clip in my timeline, and I keep the existing settings. Let me zoom a little bit in that. Then you go to Effect, and you need to download the plugin called GoPro Reframe. FX Reframe, and I drop it here. Now you can see these are the effects that you will be playing with now. So, pan, tilt, rotate, lens curve, and zoom, and then advanced control, you will have also synchronize keyframes and motion blur. What you will want to do is Click on this one so you don't have the motion blur at first. You will add it later on when you will want to export your clip again, but this is quite powerful in terms of needs from your laptop. So you will have an easier time to edit if you remove the motion blur at first and just add it at the end when you will want to export again. The synchronized keyframe, this one you will leave it on and I will explain you that why later on. So those are the five features that you can work with and the lens curve you want to put it at 70 because 70 is the equivalent to linear as you've seen now if i'm at zero it's a little bit curvy on the side if i switch to 70 
Now it's more like the linear aspect of the GoPro. Then the zoom, I like the wide angle. So I will go down to 70 also. That's the field of view. You can choose whatever you want, but I decided to go with a wide field of view. So I put this one at 70. Now you will stop working with the rotate, tilt and pan. So let's see that. I'm at zero now. If I put 30, I'll go on the right side. Minus 30, I'll go on the left side. Tilt, it's the same. If I go to 56 for instance, I'm looking up. If I go to minus 50, I'm looking down. I go back to zero and then rotate. Same, go to 40. I start rotating towards the right. If I go to minus 40, I rotate towards the left. I go back to zero. Now there is something else. If you click on projection and you start playing a little bit with your frame, you can see that this one, you have some lines appearing here. And those lines are very useful because it gives you control on those settings without actually touching them here. On the left side in this square, this space, if I go down or up, you can see the rotation numbers are moving. So I can apply it here, I can go back to zero. Then the square at the bottom and the square on top, if I move, it will change the zoom. You can see the value in the zoom changing. I'll go back to 70. And then here, the one in the middle, the main one is actually the pan and the tilt at the same time. Let's say I'm here and I click on my cursor of my mouse and I start moving. Then you can see the value starts moving also. So I'll go back to zero. So that's the beginning. So I'm actually parked right here. So I'm going to wait to be a little bit in the middle of the road. Okay, let's say this is the beginning. So this is the beginning of my clip. What I will want to do is, I want to reframe this one nicely. Let's say that I'm going to put the cross right at the end of the road, some kind of like horizon line. Okay, so this is the value I want as a starting point. So I will create a keyframe for all these values. Now remember, we kept this one synchronized keyframe. That's going to be useful now. So what I want to do is I want to go until the point where I start turning right. Now, see, I start turning right and then the GoPro did not turn right. This is because the world lock feature was on when shooting and exporting. It's like if you were saying, okay, when I start recording, this is straight, this is the north, and I want you to keep shooting in that direction. It's actually quite useful later on when we are uh, editing. So let's see. I'm going straight, I'm going straight, and then I start turning right. So this is the end of the straight line. So what I want to do is I want to add a keyframe here. This is the beginning, I'm going straight. And now I'm turning right. So I turn right, full motion. Now I turn right completely. So what I want to do, I'm going to go back to projection and now I have this. And then I'm going to go straight again. I'll put everything back in line. Change the motion and then I'll put the cross, align with the road. Okay. So if I go back to my previous keyframe, and then frame by frame, you can see now the camera is following it. So I'm gonna do the same with the, before the next turn. I'm gonna turn left here. So before I start turning left, I add a keyframe again. And then I turn and I wait for the end of the turn. Okay, I'm straight again. So I'll go back to projection. I have my lines again and I'll go back. With my mouse, I go back here. Now what you can see is that when I'm moving, I only move the pan and the tilt, but because I kept the synchronized keyframe on, it's adding the keyframe for the zoom, the lens and the rotate also, even if I did not touch them. Nine times out of 10, this will be very useful actually. It will uh, prevent you to mess up with the keyframes and keep everything in check and in line. And only in some occasion, you might want to actually remove a keyframe that you don't need anymore because those values basically never change. Rotate, stay to zero from one keyframe to the other one. 
but you might find yourself in some situation where the rotation, you will need it to change from one keyframe to another one, and then in between you will have other keyframes for other movement. It's quite useful and powerful actually. So you get the idea on how to play with the movement of your camera thanks to the keyframe, especially for the pan and the tilt. One last tips guys before closing this tutorial, it has to do with the property of your keyframes. For now the property is linear, which means that we are not smoothing up any of these changes of direction. So to smooth things up a little bit, select all your keyframes and apply continuous Bezier. As you can see, it creates a curve to your motion, making the final result more realistic. If you want, you can even dive inside the details of this motion by playing with these little nodes, but I won't go into the details for this part. The continuous Bezier settings applied by default usually do a pretty good job without touching anything. One last important comment about the continuous Bezier though is that if you need to apply any change to one of your keyframes while the continuous Bezier is already applied, make sure to switch back to linear and reapply the continuous Bezier after that. Otherwise, it may mess things up a little bit. That's why we usually apply this change at the end. Once you're happy with all the keyframes that you added to your clips, don't forget to switch on again the motion blur because this feature will make a huge difference uh, in the render and how your clip actually will look like once exported. So that's pretty much it guys. I think you have a good understanding now on how to make the most of this bad boy here when shooting 360 videos and editing with Adobe Premiere. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg. I did not play with the lens curve that much or the zoom as well by adding some keyframes. As corny as it might sound, your imagination is the limit for your creation on this one. There are so many things that can be done and I cannot wait to see what you guys have in store when using this little thing here. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more of these, please hit the subscribe button. And for those of you guys who want to see the full clips that you've seen at the very beginning of this video with the Time Warp 360, here it is.